Okay. The anatomy of immune system consists of number one, cells, two, tissues, and then three, organs, correct? And fourth one, uh, the molecules and especially what we have studied about the CDs, that the cluster discrimination size, right, CDs that we have done it. And then the fifth one is what we call it as languages, languages of uh, the immune system. What is the languages of the immune system? Do you remember that one, what we discussed about it? Suppose one cell here, okay, where all the cells which we have given and all different type of cells in different tissues and they have got a different morphology and some of them are they, uh, some of them are the bone cells are round and some of them are rectangular. So different shape, morphology is different. Also, the language, whenever uh, a cell talks to the neighboring cell, how they communicate with each other. Do you remember that the each molecule, they had their own uh, uh, surface markers? That's what we did last time, right? So each one individually, they have the surface markers. In other words, and they also call it as a, a cluster determinations. Right. So, the CDs, okay. The cells which are there in the anatomy of the immune system, the cells what we know about the T cells from thymus derived cells and B cells. And, and these cells and they have their own specificity of selecting the tissue types and then they are talking each other. And the T cells, they probably involved in identifying, identifying the antigen and the T cells and our B cells and they have got their own CDs and the cluster determination and they are present in the surface of the cell. And this is I call it as a mouth of the cell, individual cell. They have different mouth or different uh, cluster, and they communicate with this, with the molecules, these molecules and the ligand and this molecule, and then they will find out, they find out whether it can compatible. Is it, is it a, a self-cell or non-self or antigen, and, and thereby, they can suppose if this is the cell or T cell and if they can recognize the self cell or non-self depending upon their MHC molecules which are present in this and then they eliminate if it is a self. If it is a non-self or from the antigen then they can communicate with this and then learn from this what type of molecule it is and then they transmit to the other organs like a, like a, here the, the lymphoids lymphoids and where they are migrating and, and, and uh, they are uh, processing um, of the antigen which is going on and then they are, the cells are learning in, in, in turn. That's what we have studied in a couple of classes. But now our, our problem today is to study the, um, the activation, how activation of lymphocytes. This is the next chapter, okay? So we have, we have seen about the T cells and B cells and their differences in the last class. If you recollect our, our earlier notes, we have done um, yeah, different types and, and what type of CDs are present here, what type of CDs are present here, and then how they communicate with each other, which we have done, okay? And also we have seen um, how to isolate these cells. Okay, that is in the, um, in the peripheral, peripheral blood, that's in the peripheral blood. And we want to study the T cells. Suppose want to study T cells. So the blood will have RBC, 
and WBC and these white cells will have a neutrophil neutrophil I'm just writing short and then also you have a lymphocytes and these lymphocytes you have a T cells and B cells and also you have a monocyte monocytes and also you have a eosinophil so different type of cells are there in the in the WBC itself and then RBC and then you also have a platelets platelets is going on so so what you have to identify on this pool in the peripheral T cell to if you want to study this you should know what is the surface marker for the T cells and the surface marker we have to put an antibody to anti CD3 the T cells normally they have a CD3 the cluster determination or surface marker and this protein is already there in the T cell so if you use an anti CD that it is an antibody and this antibody will bind with CD3 which is present in the T cell and if you have a secondary antibody or you can also isolate by the antibody and antigen complex and then you can isolate isolate the T cells okay and if you have a lymphocytes of T and B cells to isolate only the T cells, you have to use the anti CD3 antibody. This is the one to go and bind it. In other words, CD3 is the language spoken by T cells. So, if this language is how you can pick up this language, this language can be understood by the antibody. So, that, that's why the communication of one um, you know antigen antibody communications so if they are the T cells in a population how to isolate suppose in a in a in a crowd of the people on a population who we speak uh, French German English Irish and and uh, Czechoslovak and Russians I mean Chinese I mean all language is there right a person can pick up uh, everybody is shouting there but 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 the person who is uh, you know getting or, or listening to them is a French per person. He will not listen any other language. But as soon as the French person is like bonjour, right? Okay, it's a good morning. So he can pick up that. Okay, he can understand only that language. Unless otherwise he can pick up. He learn all other languages. But he's a Frenchman. He is not knowing anything else except the French language. When he encounters this crowd, and he can pick up the French people because he knows that. The same thing, the anti-CD3 is an antibody and it will not bind any other surface marker, but it can, it can go and bind directly to CD3 wherever there. So, you can pick up all those CD3 molecules and that is the T cell. And this is the uh, uh, a way of uh, a communication. Once the communication is established, then the next step what? <coughs> In our uh, task today is the activation. Then as soon as the the CD3 or the T cell recognize its own counterpart of antibody and then what happened next in that surface molecule or uh, the surface molecule present on the membrane then as soon as it get in contact with the antibody and the next step what happens in the cytoplasm so that's the next step that we have to understand now we have to follow through now okay I'll go through in a little bit now so for the B cells, suppose if you want to study B cells, what is that communication for the B cells is CD2 and plus a complement. So, if you add CD2 and a complement and that will precipitate the B cells, B cells getting precipitate in the peripheral blood pool and then, sorry, CD2 plus complements precipitate T cells, T cells, this is encounter for the T cells, so to isolate the B cells we have to precipitate the T cell and then the supernatant, supernatant is the B cells. So in a pool of B cell and T cell you have to add CD2 and complement that will combine with the T cells and precipitate that one and then leaving the supernatant. I think we have uh, studied before when you add the CD2 2 and complement 
Okay, and this will precipitate into the T cells, and then you leave the supernatant. That's what you present at the top, and that is on the B cells. So this is some of the technique which we involve to isolate now. Okay. Now T cells are isolated. Now we have to identify the T cells um, and the subsets of the T cells. That's also we have covered last class. I'm just revising you again. Subsets of T cells. So there are two cells that uh, we have studied, T helper cells and B cytotoxic T cells, right? And the, if you refer your table uh, in your textbook, you will find CD4 is the marker for T helper cell. So if you find the T helper cells, if you want to study this, then you have to use the CD4 in the blood or the peripheral blood and then identify how many T helper cells are there, now antibody to CD4, okay. And what is the function of these cell, T helper cells? And this will help, we call it as a TH, as T and small h, T helper cells in abbreviation, TH, and it promotes, it promotes activation, activation and maturation, maturation of B cells. See, the B cells is the one that will produce more of antibody when it mature and it will activate. So the T helper cells will help. That's why it is called helper cell. It helps the B cells, okay? Also, the T activated maturation of B cells as well as the TH or the helper cells will uh, activate in the activate cytotoxic T cell. Cytotoxic, cyto means cell, cell toxic T cells because these cells is a specialized T cells and that will destroy any virally infected cells, viral infected, infected cells there is no need to survive this virally infected cell because if one, these cells are survived, then that is the end of it. It will go and infect neighboring cells and then destroy the whole organism. So this cell should be destroyed. So the T cells will have a specialized mechanism, which also we have studied earlier, and this will kill these virally infected cells and thereby protect our body as well as the defense mechanism over there. Okay. These are the functions of these T cells now. Now, let us go on to the to the next one are the T helper cells T helper cells okay control antigen specific control the antigen specific antigen specific okay inflammatory response inflammatory response okay antigen specific inflammatory response to by the stimulation of stimulation of macrophage macrophage you know the macrophage is the big eater whenever there is a, a, a bacteria which is floating around and these cells these are the macrophage okay this nucleus and it will engulf right this is the bacteria so it will activate and it will swallow and getting into the swallow, right? And this process of the stimulation of uh, the macrophage, the T helper cells involved, how it stimulates, the mechanism is the CD4, okay? They form the links first. There's the language, as I mentioned before, language of CD4 what? This is the language of T cells, right? And the CD4 and uh, links with, it will link with here MHC class 2 molecule which is present in the macrophage. This is the macrophage. Macrophage. So T helper cell, 
T cells, okay, helper cell, which will link with the MHC molecule, which is present as a macrophage, and thereby it will it will activate this engulfing process. Otherwise, the macrophage is keep quiet; it won't activate. But as soon as this uh, message is coming from the CD4 and from the T cells, and it can uh, T helper cells, then this macrophage will open its mouth. Hey, open now, and then swallow. It will come in. You know this mechanism which is uh, a stimulation or activation of macrophage and thereby it will eat here. Also, this will help in the dendritic cell, dendritic cells and also it will help on the B cells. In other words, they also stimulate, they all call it as a antigen presenting cells or APC. Why? The bacteria, if the bacteria is getting in, in the macrophage uh, cytosol and it will be chopped off a small bit and pieces. And the same thing which will happen in the dendritic cells and dendritic cells also be activated by the T helper cells. So once the dendritic cell keep quiet, but as soon as the T helper cells with the CD4 will bind with the dendritic cells and, and, and thereby it will activate and thereby it can, it can get involved uh, or participate in the engulfing or getting involved in the antigen processing inside the cell. The same thing with the CD4 also will activate the B cells and thereby it helps the B cell maturation process. So all these proper one, two, three, all these are the function of the T helper cell through CD4 links. So you should understand what is the purpose of these T cells or the T helper cells. T helper, helper cells, they have, a, they have a, a molecule as a CD4 and CD4 is the one which will communicate with the dendritic cells, macrophage or B cells to mature. So you imagine that T cells and B cells are involved in immunology or immune system. At the same time, T cells, a subset of T cells, the T helper cell, and they talk or they have in its molecule, in this surface marker, is CD4. Okay, CD4 is a surface marker that is responsible for talking to these cells and activate. Okay, now we will go on to the activation process. Okay. Now the next uh, type of cells in the T cells is cytotoxic, cytotoxic T cells. And cytotoxic T cells and they have in its uh, surface marker, surface marker as CD8, okay. Suppose this is cytotoxic T cell, okay, the nucleus and, and CD8, 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 CD8. So they are the surface marker. Just like the uh, T helper cell, they have CD4 and the cytotoxic T cells, they have CD8, okay. And this CD8 will will combine. I mentioned before what is the function of the cytotoxic T cells? Cytotoxic T cells will identify the virally infected cell and kill that cell. Suppose this is the cell, okay, this is the tissue cell or any epithelial cell or any type of cells which is here and this is the nucleus and here this cell is, uh, the virus is an inert molecule and virus is an inert molecule. It cannot divide on its own. It needs a live cells. So as soon as the viral particle are getting in this uh, cytosol and it is being processed and use this machinery and it propagate more of virus. Virus cannot reproduce on itself. That you should understand first. It cannot reproduce itself. It needs another life part another live cells. So using that, the live cell synthetic machinery, nucleic acids and other things and then thereby processed and they will form its own code, DNA uh, replication, if it's a DNA virus or RNA replication, if it's an RNA virus and thereby it can have prepared its own code and, and, and destroy this cell and then this virus going neighboring cells and then infect the other cells and thereby destroy the whole organism. That's why the viral infection is so dangerous on that inside the cell. So if we have our own immunity, 
our immune system where the cytotoxic T cells will exactly identify only not the normal cell, only the viral infected cell and destroy that cell totally. How? The cytotoxic T cell, they have a CD8 and the virally infected cell, they used to process MHC1 molecule, major histocompatibility, MHC1. And this MHC1 is the save our souls. As soon as the viral infected cell, they process and this nucleus and everything, they become alert. Hey, someone is invaded us. I don't want this guy. Please help me or please destroy me. So that is the message or the signal and that is being transmitted through MHC molecule 1. So MHC1 molecule, as soon as it is having a red flag, MHC1, then the CD8 will find out, hey, there is a dangerous going on. MHC1 is normally won't be there, but this will combine and bind with this one, MHC1 molecule of the virally infected cell. And thereby, as I mentioned before, another polyper where the grand sign and a pep, uh, you know, a, a granular um, a proteolytic enzyme is being delivered and, and thereby it will destroy the whole cell will be destroyed. So the virus cannot propagate and virus cannot reproduce and virus cannot produce its own core and virus cannot be transmitted to the neighboring cell and thereby the viral infection is being controlled by our own immune system using cytotoxic T cells. So if you understand the basic beginning of that, the type of T cells, the T helper cells on one side is protecting us, another side is the T helper cells, uh, another type of cytotoxic T cells, is also helps in our system. So T helper cells, the communication mode or surface markers is CD4 and cytotoxic T cells, they have CD8 as a communication mode or the surface marker where a CD4 communicate with the MHC2 molecules of those cells, the dendritic cell, macrophage, and the B cells, whereas the cytotoxic T cells, they have the CD8 as a communication mode, which will bind to MHC1 molecule of virally infected cells. So, and thereby, the virusly, virally infected cell is being destroyed by the cytotoxic T cell, which will inject all the proteolytic enzymes and, 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 and other uh, mechanisms, and thereby it will destroy totally. So, do you understand now how the viral is a, na this is a natural way of dealing with these cells, which also we are studying on the innate immune system as well before, okay? Now, we will go through uh, the another part of the lymphocytes activation. Okay, that is on a lymphocyte. These are T sites of B cell activation. Lymphocyte activation through through non-specific antigen. Non-specific, uh, not antigen, non-specific mitogen. Let's put it that way. I mentioned before, mitogen is mito means uh, cell division, like inducing genesis. So mitosis, genesis, or mitogen, non-specific mitogens is some of the molecule which induces mitosis. So they call mitogens. Okay. So this one, this uh, type of activity, <coughs> they are unrelated to, unrelated to antigen specificity. Specificity. There is no need for antigen. Without antigenic specificity, it will activate. What are those molecules? We'll see that one here now. Antigen specificity of uh, the surface marker or lymphocyte surface marker. So before, what we have seen, CD8 and then CD4, these are the T helper cell and cytotoxic T cell, the surface marker, and that will activate lymphocyte. Now we are going to see, without this surface marker, without CDs, how they are activated, okay? And they, uh, they call it as uh, polyclonal, T or B cells, polyclonal T or B cells, activators, activators. 
polyclonal T or B cell activators and, and, and they are not depending upon any surface molecule CD or anything. Um, the example here, one, one of the example is staphylococcal enterotoxin. Entero means intestine, so it is a staphylococcus. So that is another, this is a cockle bacterial organism, is that right? Staphylococcus, coccus, you know about the coccus? What is a coccus, a long or short or round? Huh? Round, oh, okay. Staphylococcal enterotoxins. So they produce the toxins and that toxins act as a activators of this one, T cell, B cells, okay. They stimulate these toxins, okay. If you have a contaminated with the staph contamination, that's a bit dangerous. If it contaminated in your food, that is again activate the T cells. Where sir, we will see that one. It stimulate, it stimulate all T cell, T helper cell, cytotoxic T cells, okay, all T cells, okay. These T, all T cells that bear the T cell receptor, T cell receptor like a V beta. Okay, families, V beta families, T cell receptors, okay, B cell families, and irrespective of the antigen specificity. So, whenever there is a VB family TCR is there, then the cephalococcus uh, infection or the enterotoxin will activate the T cells. So, it is not depending upon any CD8 or CD4 which are present in the T cell population, no. And also, there is no antigen specificity because the, whenever there is a, a CD marker and there are antigen specificity and there is no antigen specificity. Whenever there is an infection and the polyclonal T or B cells, it will stimulate through the VB receptor or TCR. Whenever there is the VB the families or the receptors are there, yes, it will, it will activate, okay. Now we will go on to the next one. like these communications again, the T cells again from the T cells, they also, you know, activating T cells are activating the interactions, I put it that interaction, so T cells interactions through pairs of accessory molecule, pairs of accessory molecules. So I mentioned before if you want to communicate, a person communicate to himself, it's not a communication or self-communication. It's not a way that you should do. If a person is, uh, is talking to himself, then what do you think that person is? Sorry? It's a weird person, <laughs> right? So the same thing, the cells, they won't uh, talk to him itself, right? So always if there is a, a need, then the cells are talked to another person. So that's why it should be a, a complementary pair. Complementary molecular pairs. Okay, a cell needs another cell, okay. This is a nucleus, this is a, a cell A and this is a cell B, okay. Just with an example, I'm just, I will go detail a bit later, but just you want to. So, it will talk, uh, it can communicate through its surface molecules. So, as I mentioned earlier, it has a specific molecular architecture or surface marker and which will compatible or complementary, I said a complementary then only it can, it can talk, otherwise it will ignore. Just like a person when you, when you want to communicate, you should know their language, otherwise you are going mad, right? So you have to speak properly. If you are not speaking properly, they don't understand and they cannot, uh, you know, follow through. So it's, it's a bit difficult. So that's why even, you know, you have to uh, be careful you, when you talk, you should uh, know what is the language, the other person or the recipient. 
So if you have uh, thousands and thousands of molecules over there, but there are only few molecules can talk the language and which will understand the other, other person. So a type of CDs here and another type of a molecule, other, other way I put it like a surface marker, SM, and then here the surface marker. There must be a compatibility. Then only it can choose the other cell and this shell can understand these cells. So what are those pairs? We'll go through. What are the molecule or surface molecule which we can see now here? Here one side we have a T cells, okay? These are the T cells, one side. Another side we can have an antigen presenting cell, APC. Okay. Okay. Now the T cells, if the T cells we have a MHC2, as I mentioned before, it can bind with CD4. This is the language here, okay? This is all of the T cell and this is the B cell, uh, or the APC or the antigen presenting cells. Now MHC1, where it communicate with the CD8 of this antigen presenting cells. And then we said VCAM1, and it can communicate with the VLA4, and then ICAM, these are the aggression molecules. These, all these molecules are present in the cell membrane, okay? ICAM1, it can communicate with the LFA1, okay? Now, LFA3, it can communicate with the CD2, okay? Then B7 from T cell, all of them from T cells, different type of T cells, okay? B7 can communicate with the CD28 and CTLA4. So these are the surface molecule present in the APC, okay? So now, this communication which will go like this. The antigen presenting cells or dendritic cell or macrophage, okay, when as soon as they they have the antigen and these cell surface marker will be appearing depending upon what type of cells this antigen presenting are where the, where the cells. The antigen is not particularly going to one particular cell. It can go either the macrophage or it can go through the antidendritic cell or it can go so or it can go through all those cells, macrophage and uh, uh, dendritic cells and the B cells. So all of them is taking at the same time. It is not one cell and then wait, hey, I am not doing that. And dendritic cell can do it. Hey, no, no, I am not going to do that. Only macrophage is going to do that antigen process. No, it is not going to happen like that. As soon as the antigen enter, all these cells are participating to it. So they, all the collection of the cell which will participate, which will engulf, will process, that's the antigen presenting cells. And those antigen presenting cells, they express this protein at its molecular membrane level. CD4, CD8, VLA1, LFA1, CD2, CD28, and CT8. As soon as it express, then it will communicate with this to the T cells. These T cells, will, they have the MHC1, MHC2, and then VCAM, ICAM1, LF3, B7. So they will communicate, and then the T cells, now the T cells, what? Activate. So the bacteria or the antigen or viral or anything like, you know, they will they'll engulf by this. As soon as it engulf, it changes its molecular surface marker to CD4 and everything. As soon as it changes this, already the T cells there with these molecules are different type of T cell. It will communicate with this one, and thereby the T cells now is getting activated. Do you understand now this part? so far, how a T cell or the lymphocyte is getting activated. First of all, we should know what type of T cells, T cells and B cells. And then even the T cell, what type of T cells is that T helper cell, cytotoxic T cells, what is the surface markers for each one, and then how they're being activated because they have been activated by the antigen presenting cells or APC cells. And that is APC is the one which will process, is the first encounter with the antigen or bacteria as soon as it enters, the antigen presenting cell or dendritic cell will change, will engulf and change its surface marker. The surface marker is the language, the surface marker CD4, CD8 and uh, uh, CD2, CD28. As soon as it changes its surface marker and then it can communicate the T cells, now the T cell is getting activated. What do you mean by the activation? 
Now, let's go on to the next part. Okay, now we are going on to the activation. Activation of T cells. If I say activation of T cells in this sense, you should know about how this has been activated. Immediately you should know, hey, bacteria are viral getting in. Antigen presenting cells bind to it, engulf it, process it, and then the cell surface marker is being changed. And then this cell surface marker is talked to the T cells because T cells are having a separate uh, molecular marker. And then now the T cell is being activated. Now, what is the activation inside? What happens inside the T cells as soon as it communicates with the antigen presenting cell surface marker cells? Okay. It requires two signals. Now, what is this? Required two signals. Okay, activation. It requires two signals. Then one signal activation. Right. The one, the one signal. Okay, activation. Once there's a signal, we'll see that one. One signal activation. Okay, lead to unresponsiveness and. Response. It won't. It induces anything. Unresponsiveness. Otherwise, it is called. That is, it is called as energy. A n e r g y. So you should remember this term. Energy. Energy means there is a signal. That signal has been accepted by the T cell, but it's keep quiet. It is not doing anything. No response at all. Sometimes it's, it happens, right? They, because they don't know what to do, but you know, keep quiet, keep quiet. That's it. So that's called energy. Okay. And then the first signal, I'll put it that way now. First signal, TCR, the T cell receptors, and MHC plus, MHC plus a peptide molecule peptide peptide interaction they will tcr and the mhc plus peptide interaction and then the second signal will start that the co stimulation co stimulation co stimulation i put it like co stimulation of cd28 by B7 interaction. So the first is the TCR MHC plus a peptide, and then second one is the co-stimulation of the CD28 by B7, and they are the surface molecule. And now what happened? The next step after this communication, which I mentioned before, what happened here? The next part is protein. This is a real activation. Protein. Tyrosine phosphorylation. Phosphorylation. Okay. It is it is an early event. Early event. Okay. I'll explain in a in a in a in a, in a, in a cartoon like uh, suppose this is the cell, as I mentioned, they communicate with the cell, cell surface marker. So here the cell surface marker which we know about the CD28 and B7 as, uh, as well as the uh, TCR and then um, you know MHC plus peptide and then you have co-stimulation with the CD28 molecule and B7 as soon as it binds this, the below this molecule of the cell membrane you have a protein molecules, okay, these are the protein. And this protein normally is made up of what? Amino acids chain, amino acid 1, amino acid 2, amino acid 3, amino acid. So, so you have a different shape and, and three-dimensional structure and all the proteins. So what happened in the cytosol, there is a, a molecule of tyrosine molecule over there. Tyrosine. Tyrosine is normally what? You have a hydroxy amino acid, right? And you remember in your biochemistry, you understand that very well. So the tyrosine of this protein, tyrosine, 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 where is it? here the tyrosine. So the tyrosine of this cell membrane, and this tyrosine is getting phosphorylated. As soon as it binds, it will activate 
a phosphorylase reaction with the kinase reaction. Kinase is the addition of phosphate molecule to the protein to activate and binds with the phosphorylation. So now the protein molecule with a, with a P in it, P for phosphorylation. So where the phosphorylation is occurring and the tyrosine. So the first event as soon as it binds with the TCR at the CD28 because these are the communication from the antigen presenting cells. Now the T cells is getting activated by protein tyrosine phosphorylation. So that is the kinase is being activated. Now this protein, this is being activated. So the CD4 or TCR co-localization and they lead to this activation of this tyrosine protein, we call it otherwise ITAM. Have you remember that immunostimulatory tyrosine based activation motive? So this already we have, uh, we have studied this one ITAM motive, okay. And, and this is the next step is this is going to be item is phosphorylated within the pre, de, depending upon the CD3 and, and other thing. And then once it has been phosphorylated, it will again activate in turn activate. So now I put it here activate ZAP 17, the zinc finger activating protein 70 kinases. So this is the another enzyme. So it activate ZAP 70, zinc finger, zinc finger activating protein. And, and this is a, another protein. This protein is again a kinase enzyme. This kinase enzyme is being activated by this one, item P. Once this is phosphorylated, it won't keep quiet, it will activate the ZAP70 kinases. It will activate the ZAP70 protein, it's been phosphorylated. Once this is activated, then immediately getting into the nucleus because in the nucleus where the DNA is there is the down regulation, it will activate the gene, it will activate, activate the gene respective gene and this gene is responsible for what are the transcription transcription process of this protein and everything which is coming up. So first and foremost is the protein tyrosine phosphorylation that is going to item. Once this item is phosphorylated, activate the ZAP70 kinases and that is a zinc finger protein and they will go into the nucleus and activate process. So, do you understand? This is the overall stuff. I'm going to the still deeper process into that one. Do you follow now? So first they communicate with the T cells and um, with the antigen presenting cells. As soon as it binds, this TCR and uh, B7 CD28 and it, will, it won't keep quiet. As soon as it binds, there is some reactions going on with the activate the kinase. It will activate the membrane level of these protein tyrosine phosphorylation which is occurring. That is the first event and then that will activate the zinc finger or uh, zap kinases. So on the kinases which is coming here and then activate the, uh, uh, another protein which will go into the nucleus and activate the gene into the process. Now we are going to detail what happens in this activation process. Now we are going to step two the deeper into that one. Do you follow now? Yes? Now how this signaling that we call it as a downstream event, downstream events follows, follows the TCR signaling. See this one is the TCR, this is the T cell receptor gene which is occurring, okay, which is the activator, that's the upstream. Now we are going to the downstream what happens down the path, TCR signaling. Okay, for example, one, okay, interleukin, interleukin, two, otherwise we call it IL2. This is an, a type of a molecule, interleukin two is cytokine activation. This should be activated, interleukin two is a molecule, this is activated by 
the antigen presenting cell and T cells interactions and the T cells will produce, T cell receptor and T cells will produce this interleukin. How this is being occurred? That is an example. We will see that one here now. To activate it, number one, it activate the guanine nucleotide which is present in the DNA, guanine nucleotide exchange factor. Otherwise, we call it GEF, GEFs, okay, factors, it will activate. And then it will also go through hydrolysis, hydrolysis of phospholipids, phospholipids, because the phospholipids is the uh, bilayer membrane of the lymphocytes, okay. Hydrolysis of phospholipids by what? By phospholipase enzyme, phospho lipase enzyme, okay. And then number three, it will also activate by IP3, IP3 mobilizes. IP3 is the inocytol triphosphate, inocytol triphosphate molecule, otherwise we call it IP3 and it will mobilize mobilize calcium, intracellular calcium from mitochondria and other storage, intracellular calcium. So this calcium is necessary for this activation of the phospholipase enzyme and phospholipase is the one which will uh, cleave the phospholipids. So it, it goes through that step with the activation. Once the phospholipid is cleaved, then what you get, um, the number fourth step is the diacyl glycerol, glycerol and also the calcium is also being removed because of the activation of phospholipids and immobilization. This will activate protein kinase, activate protein kinase C molecule. There are protein kinase B, A, B, C. This is a protein kinase C. And also it will activate calcineurin, calcineurin, okay. And then that further this will activate, the next step is activation, activation of RAS, another uh, a protein molecule, RAS, by GEF, and that is the GEF is the one to save our soul, right? You know, it's getting on the sets of kinase casket. This will, this activation of RAS by GEF, that is the sets of, that is starting point, sets of kinase casket. What is a casket? Cascade is a series of reactions. Molecule 1 activate molecule 2 and molecule 2 will activate molecule 3. Molecule 3 activate molecule 4. Molecule 4 activate molecule 5. 5 activate 6. So one is depending upon the other and the series of reaction we call it as a cascade. So we call it as these are the not one molecule, these are one kinase, another kinase, another kinase, another kinase, another kinase. So each kinase is depending upon the activation of the, the earlier one. So it's a series of reaction which is going on. So this kinase sets off is depending upon the RAS and how the RAS is being activated, that is on the GEF. And GEF is being activated by the calcineurin and diacylglycerol and calcium. And that is coming from the earlier event which we discussed earlier from the TCR signaling, okay? So if you remember the kinase cascade, now what are the kinase, kinase cascade? Our ultimate aim is to release the IL-2, right, in a, in a previous uh, slide which I showed you about it, okay. Now we'll go on to the next one as a, as a kinase RAS, okay, that's the kinase activation, okay, kinase cascade, right, kinase cascade. And this is being activated through another molecule as well, RAF. And this RAF is the one we call it as a MAP kinase. MAP kinase kinase. K 
kinase kinase we call it as a m e k in short in abbreviation form okay and also also another kinase we call it another map kinase map kinase e r k extracellular kinase e r k This is the MEK, ERK, and they activate the RAF, and RAF activate the RAS, and that is the pathway which the, the signaling molecule is getting in. And the another factor is here, the transcription factor. The all of them are activated now, MAP kinases. As I mentioned before, see, this is the process where the GEF has been released and sets up the cascade. And this cascade is involved like a RAF kinases and MAP kinase, 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 and then the MEK and ERK. All these events are taking place in cytoplasm. The one which I mentioned before, um, the event which is taking place, the earliest event here, it, it takes place in the membrane or the surface molecule. GEF, hydrolysis, phospholipid, it is in the membrane and then phospholipase activation here. This is also taking place in the membrane. And then the protein kinase activation, and then the calcineurin, the, that's it. After that, the RAS and RAF and, and then kinase and everything here, all of them is activated on the ERK and the MEK, are take, um, all of them are taking place in the cytoplasm. Now the next goal is how from the message or signal is transferred from cytoplasm to the nucleus, right? So the transcription factors, they are called transcription factors. Transcription factors. These transcription factors, we call it as a FOS and C June and NFAT and NF kappa B. Okay, NF kappa B. So they are the nuclear binding proteins. So these are, again, they are the nuclear trans, the transcription factors. They are all the protein molecule. What type of protein? They are DNA binding proteins. As I mentioned before, the ZAF as a zinc uh, finger activating protein. So those kind of protein on this class, we find the FOS, June, NFAT, and NF kappa B. So these are deciding factors in the DNA level where it can activate activation of genes. For example, in IL-2, interleukin-2, like any other gene. So the process of the DNA activation or the DNA transcription factors, that is the kinase cascade. You should understand that part. Do you follow now how we are, how the signal from the antigen, antibody, now here the antigen is communicating with the membrane cell receptors and the, how the membrane cell receptors, the binding nature of the T cell it's been activated certain type of kinase, right? Certain type of molecule, a protein inside the cell. So I am taking all these principle which is taking place inside the cell, inside one cell as soon as it communicate with the another one. Okay. Now the all these nuclear finding this one. I'm just going follow through this one. Okay. They are activating this IL-2 gene, where it will go onto the DNA. Here, yeah, this is the DNA molecule, and I put it on an IL-2 gene. Here, this is the, you know, is going on the part, but I'm, this is the part. Where the gene transcription process, where they will bind, they are the promoter region. Promoter region. So the promoter region where this molecule will bind. How this molecule will come from? They are now the, the, it is in the nucleus, okay, and this is cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm, okay, and cytoplasm you get the activation of the nuclear factors. Well, the nuclear factor is activated. That is activated by kinase cascade. 
how the kinase cascade that is activated by the antigen presenting cell, the communications and everything onto the T cell. So, all of them and then it will migrate into the nucleus and then it will go and bind and go and bind to the promoter region of IL2 gene and then it will start a transcription here, it will go through that. Now the signal propagated, okay, now I will just write it how in, a, in a summary, signals propagated by a small number of MHC peptide is a complex, right? That is what I, I mentioned earlier, small number of MHC peptide complex, how this is being activated, that is what we did study earlier on and they serially trigger, serially trigger a large number of, large number of TCRs, the T cell receptors, it activate the TCRs and these TCRs provide sustained, continuous, sustained, sustained signals. This is the propagation, how the signal is propagated, the small peptide and MHC complex on the membrane level and then serially trigger and uh, a, a, a large number of TCRs, already the TCRs, more number of TCRs or T cell receptors and that continuously that the signal is being transmitted. So it is not like a one time it, it goes through, no, it is not like that. It is already there are several receptors through this and it will continuously propagate it. Now, once this propagation is there, how long it will take place? How long the activation? Tell me, how long this activation is going to be there? I say sustained and in the continuous process of activation. How long? As long as the signal, okay. That's a good answer. As long as the signal or the binding or, and then communication. But there is a certain reaction, it will, it will stop in a negative or inactivation. There is a process inactivation to stop the signal propagation to stop synthesis of IL-2 gene or to stop uh, gene expression. So, I mean, you are, you are talking to people and you are not always talking. You are talking, eating and then you are going away and then you are communicating with a particular person, right? So, you, the cells will come, it communicate, hey, there is a danger, we will to activate. Okay, I will prepare, that's it. Then after that, it is not going, going keep on uh, continuously producing that compound or producing a protein. No, it is not like that. There, there is a time it will stop in it. So this inactivation of the cell or the signaling is through the B7 delivers, B7 there is another cell surface mo 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 molecule and that will deliver a negative signal, a negative signal, okay. And it will also this negative signal through CTLA4. So it is also an activation. So one type of activation that will induce synthesis of a protein. The another type of binding that involves in cell surface molecule that will also an activation. But that activation towards an inhibition of that synthesis. CTL4, okay, and also CB1 family family adapter molecule that involves negative regulation, negative regulation. I put it in a, in a cartoon way like this. This is the T cell, okay, this is the nucleus and once you get the MHC signal 1 peptide, yeah, it will activate, okay, for items and and then signaling cascades and everything, all the molecules are getting over there in the nucleus and, and it will start synthesizing a molecule of IL-2, it's being synthesized as per the activation process. It will go on and on and on, it will go on. But at the same time, another type of activation here where you will get the B7 molecules and CTL4A, it will also activate and this activate process, what will happen? 
it will activate and then it inhibit. So there is a, a, a correlation, there is a level of IL-2 is being concentrated in the cytoplasm or the delivery to the neighboring cells. As soon as that, that uh, cytokine or that type of protein is being produced, a concentration, it will activate the, the CTL4 and B7 communication and thereby there is a feedback signal and this is being activated and it will stop synthesizing or the negative regulation of that molecule. So if you remember our process of this class or the, or the aim of this class to discuss the lymphocyte activation. So you should, you should know it activates to synthesize certain defensive molecules or cytokine. At the same time, these molecules are the communication or the activation through a negative regulation. A positive as well synthesis as well as the another activation will inhibit the synthesis of the defensive molecule or the cytokine molecule or IL-2. So the activation, you know about, you have to, you know, do something like, like a person is being commanding, hey, you go, keep on running, running. That's also a command from the chief officer. And also the same person and in a different way, hey, you have to stop it. So the command is the same. You have to, activation is the same. One activation is the, towards a positive effect, another activation or another command is going to stop that reaction. So that's a both our activation. You should remember that. Now we'll go on to the next one. Phosphatases, okay, the mechanism. Now I'm just going into the little bit of mechanism. It's not going to detail, but I'm just giving a mechanism of how this activation which is involved, mechanisms of these kinases and everything. They got the phosphatases, phosphatases activation. Phosphatases activation. Okay, that increase, increase kinase activity, kinase activity. This is something like, uh, I draw this as an enzyme, this is a kinase enzyme, okay. And they have already some phosphate group is attached to these kinases. Whenever this phosphate is attached to the kinase enzyme, it is inactive. Another one the same enzyme without phosphate, there is no phosphate, no phosphate, no, nothing, then it is active. Active means this kinase can activate and phosphorylate another molecule, this is also kinase. So from this to this, what? There, what is the difference from this molecule and this molecule? This molecule is present with the phosphate attached to the molecule and there is no phosphate is attached to this kinase molecule. So the enzyme phosphatases, which will come and play a role, which will remove, remove phosphate group from this, and thereby it activate this kinase, and, and it will be activated. So this phosphatase activation is again has been regulated by the upward regulation of um, the phosphorylated kinases, or item, or whatever the signal which is coming up. So this is one of the mechanism. Kinases, if it is phosphorylated, in this occasion it is inactive. So the phosphate group should be removed and thereby it be activated. So phosphatase is removal of phosphate done by phosphatase is an enzyme. Phosphorylase, R-Y-L-A, that means add a phosphate. So phosphatase is something like a, a scissor. Scissor, I'm just drawing a, a scissor cartoon here it will remove this one. The kinases, in other words, it will add, add the phosphate group. It will add to another protein molecule, okay? So that's one of the mechanism, how it be removed for this activation. Okay, the next one, B cells. So far we have done about of the T cells. Now I'll go on to a little bit of detail about the B cells activation. Before that, I just want to give you a break and we'll come back maybe five minutes and then we will go through the, okay. Any questions so far? Any questions? Synchronize? No, sir. I can see Ellen and Albert and what happened to the other persons? I think Michelle is still sick. Oh, she's sick, sure. okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, take care. And then uh, Victoria, Kelly is there? 
Oh, okay, wonderful. Do you follow? Yes. Okay, good. Are you listening to some video lectures, class? What was that? Video lectures? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Uh, because we want to, you know, review for exam next week. There's someone exam, which I want to check with you about it. Okay. For all of you. Doctor? Yes, go ahead. The exam tomorrow is covering what chapters? I'm sorry. Uh, next week, uh, it's going to be whatever we stop last class and then to this, uh, to this class, what we are going to cover it today and then we will finish that, okay? And then you are going to have only a couple more chapters for the 30th of that. Uh, after the exam, I may start doing that, you know, lecture part and then we will have a 30th one more class and that's it. And after that, you are going for final exam and a whole comprehensive exam on that final, okay? Um, you didn't give us anything in Schwamm's for this exam so far. Are you going to assign something from Schwamm's? Uh, for this exam, um, I'm giving some questions from my lectures, not from Zuan book, no. Okay, just checking, thank you. Okay.
on it. All right, this will go again. Um, the B cells activation, so far we have done so uh, about the T cells. The B cells, they respond, okay, they respond to three types of antigens or the reactions, okay. Type 1 of antigen, type 1. Because our main goal is activation of lymphocytes. So far, we have done the T cell activation with the MHC and the communication of the cell surface marker. But the B cell is the one you remember correctly, uh, which will produce more of antibody or plasma cells from B cells, correct? So the B cells, they direct encounter with the antigens. How they do? This? So number one, they have a thymus independent antigens, okay, thymus is involved in, in thymus, but some antigen which is not, not involved in thymus, so it, that is called thymus independent antigens, and they are called as a polyclonal activator which also we, I mentioned before in the start of the class, polyclonal activators. And they are specific, they are specific for B cells, they are specific B cells by surface Ig receptors, surface immunoglobulin, Ig for immuno, G for globulin, surface immunoglobulin, receptors. If you remember uh, our earlier classes uh, of the B cells, if these B cells is synthesized a type of an uh, antibody, a part of this antibody which is, which, is, which is not secreted, they are withheld in the membrane, a part of this antibody. And they are, we call it a surface immunoglobulin receptors. And some of them this immunoglobulin is secreted outside the cells with the additional protein structure in the molecule, they are secreted. They are secreted as antibody. In other words, I put it in a simpler way, the truncated antibody which is uh, withheld in the membrane and it is also a type of antibody but it is not secreted out but it is withheld in the membrane and attachment as a receptors. So the receptor is called surface immunoglobulin receptors. Meaning these receptors may have identical function with the capacity to bind with the antigen. Like, a, like the antibody can bind with the antigen, but here the cell, B cell receptors can also bind with the antigen. You should remember that. So how an antigen binds with the receptors, the same way how an antibody binds with an antigen. A part of the antibody is retained in the cellular membrane so that it can bind with the antibody as well. So when I ask a question, how the antibody or how the antigen, where the antigen is bind, you may have to answer number one, Antigen can bind with the antibody, that anybody can answer that question, that's good. Also, the antigen can bind with the B cell surface receptors, otherwise B cell immunoglobulin surface receptors. They also similar binding nature with the antibody, so that you should remember. But it is not specific though. The antigen may be different one, but a part of this antigen can bind with the the, you know, onto the surface receptors. We also call it as the polyclonal activators. They are not specific. That's why I put it, it's not specific. They specifically are a particular clone. No. 
it is a, it, it is a specific for B cell only. These activators can activate only B cell. Why? Because the B cells only they have the surface Ig receptors, nothing, none other cell or no other cell, they do not have any surface immunoglobulin receptors. So, it will not bind. So, antigen can bind specifically to the B cells. So, that is the specificity. Do you understand that part? No. Now, the next one is type 2. Type 2 antigens, they are also thymus independent. There is no involved the thymus molecule or um, I mean thymus derived cell. This is a thymus independent antigen. This is also thymus independent antigen. They are called it as a polymeric molecules. Polymeric molecules and they also as a cross link, they also cross link many, not one, not many surface immunoglobulin receptors. Okay. And they also have a long half lives of this activation, these receptors link. These are polymeric molecules cross-link many of the surface immunoglobulin receptors and they have a long half life and they provide, provide persistent signal, persistent, persistent signal. Persistent signal of what? Activation of, activation of antibody synthesis because that is a B cell function, right? We may also call this polymeric, this function as a memory or learning process. Memory of this cell, there is a question I put it over there, the mechanism. This is a type 2 of the B cell activation. You follow now? Type 2, type 1 activation is surface immunoglobulin receptors binding direct and number 2 is thymus independent where it can also buy polymeric molecules, the antigen polymeric, which will use the cross-link of many receptors. In the earlier one, it will bind only one receptor and it will activate, one receptor activation. But the second one here, this polymeric molecule, B cell, here you have the surface molecule. So, it will cross-link here, cross-link here, cross-link here, cross-link here, meaning one polymeric molecule is enough to activate so many receptors and then it will induce the antibody secretion. In this case, you need only one, this antigen necessary for this binding and one signal propagator and here it will activate one. Suppose you need to have five of the antibody, you have five antigen binding to it and thereby to produce five antibody. Here, if it is a cross link with the neighboring surface Ig molecule, one antigen is enough, sufficient to synthesize five antibody molecule. Do you follow that, that type of antigenic specificity on that part? See, one to give five, which is more beneficial. If I give you one dollar, if you give me five dollar back, another guy one dollar and that guy will give you back only one dollar. So, it is the bank, right? So, what? So, if you give one dollar with four dollar interest and then he's, you are getting a five dollar back. So, that is, which is advantage for you? If I give you one dollar, the bank give you five dollar, that is best. Or a guy which I give one dollar and this guy will return me the one dollar after a, a five years return. So, which is benefit for me? The bank, right? The bank will provide five dollar, yes. I give one and give five dollars. The same way, the type two is an advantage for us because it gives us a memory and it gives a cross link and it put more interest to us and return back. So this part is very important. You keep remember. We will come back that one a bit later. Okay. Now we'll go on type three. This is thymus dependent antigen dependent antigen activation. So, we have studied type 1, type 2, they are thymus independent antigen, 
And here, thymus dependent requires, but this antigen requires thymus, or it requires this antigen, type 3 antigen requires cooperation. Cooperation of what? We already we have seen helper T cells, helper T cells to stimulate to stimulate antibody production production through B cells that is the B cells that will produce of plasma cell. So antibody production through the B cell and matured plasma cells. How the mechanism? Is the antigen now captured? Where it will capture? Always the antigen captures by surface immunoglobulin receptors. You should not forget that. Surface immunoglobulin receptor of B cells because we are talking about B cells now. Of B cells. Okay. Now, process after the binding with the receptors, what happened? Processed and then expressed meaning expressed means the gene is being activated and gene expression that is expressed on the surface, surface as peptide. It activates certain gene and that will produce the product as a peptide, okay. And this peptide now, this peptide now, okay, the process which will produce a peptide, okay, is continuation of the last slide, okay, peptide and that is combined or combined with otherwise association with, association with MHC2 molecules, okay. So the peptide is synthesized, how this peptide is synthesized? Because the antigen captured IG receptor process expressed and then activation of gene and that peptide combined with the MHC2 and this peptide combination, this one, this peptide combination, okay, recognized, recognized by T helper cells, T helper cells, okay. Now, these T helper cells, now what will happen, these T helper cells, activate, activate, it activate resting B cells. This is something like a, like a cartoon like first B cell, they have Ig receptors and they bond with what? The antigen which is binding with the surface Ig molecule. We call it as a virgin cells. But these cells will now process and the gene is being there and then MHC. And now what happened is the T helper cells will recognize this. This one, this molecule, this processed one. And then once this is being attached with this, then the T helper cells can activate the resting B cell. The T helper cells will receive this peptide and then TH, TH, and TH, and all they have a peptide because this peptide is coming from a B cell. Then this will not keep quiet and then it will go to another B cell, another B cell, another B cell, another B cell. They are restricting B cells. So these T helper cells now is helping to promote these resting B cells to produce more of plasma cells and plasma cells produce more of antibody. So the activation of B cells will have a three types. One is the thymus independent, another one type 2 is thymus independent and that's polymeric or memory cells. And number three is thymus dependent and because it will activate uh, by uh, T helper cells and T, per, T helper cell will go and activate the resting B cells to produce more of antibodies. You follow now this part? How do how do you uh, B cells is getting activated? 
Now, the next part is uh, the B cell activation is the hapten molecule, hapten. We remember the small molecule which is not able to, um, you know, synthesize its own of antibody, but it requires the another molecule as a carrier molecule before we have studied that. Hapten and they also combined with a what? Small molecules, they are small molecules uh, with the carrier protein. Remember that one? Carrier protein, hapten. And here, this one is a T and B cell collaborations, T cells and B cells collaboration. Collaboration. And thereby, the two activation will help to rise on hapten small cell molecule to raise antibody. How? T cells can recognize, recognize the carrier molecule, carrier molecule and thereby it will activate for the antibody synthesis for the B cell and B cells now recognize, recognize the hapten, H-A-P-T-E-N, hapten and thereby it will produce antibody to hapten. When B cell alone cannot produce the antibody to hapten. Or T cell alone cannot help, but T and B cell both collaboration. T cell will recognize the carrier molecule and thereby it learned the process, hey, there is a carrier molecule, I need to produce an antibody, but where is the uh, blueprint for the antigen? B cell will recognize the hapten and thereby it, the antibody will be produced and, and this process we call it as a T and B cell collaboration, hapten. You follow this point? Yes? how the T cell activation, how the B cell activation, how T and B cell both activation. Yes? You follow? With this, I am finishing this chapter of uh, the um, chapter 8, correct? Uh, lymphocyte activation process, okay? And now I want you to go through the profile axis of uh, the vaccination, the chapter vaccination and I'm going to give you um, a short introduction and then we will review for the next week exam, okay? Yes, chapter 13. Chapter 13, part as a vaccination. In the old book, they call it as the prophylaxis. What is prophylaxis? Yes? What is that? Prevention. Prevention, correct. Prophylactic. So if you want to take some medications to prevent the incoming infections and everything, then you can prevent that. So one of the process, the vaccination is the one, and before going to the detail, I want to give just a, just a small bit of information, how to control the infection so far, how to control the infection. So far what we have covered in the earlier chapter is the basic immunology and today onwards we are going to on the clinical immunology or applied immunology, whatever the knowledge which we have it before, we are going to apply onto the, you know, what, how we can prevent certain disease. So that's very important. So one other thing is the prophylactic uh, therapy, in this case, is a vaccination. Vaccination, one other thing where we can uh, induce or boost our immune system. How? That's what we are going to study today. And where we can do it? One example here, um, how to control the infection. And UK, because this, this textbook is written from the UK, and so they got a lot of information. They control rabies. You know rabies, the infection? And from... Cytokosis. This rabies infection, cytokosis infection, can be controlled by stop importing, importing for dogs for rabies and parrots from other countries. Dogs and parrots. They dogs will give rabbits, 
are parrots in fact with the cytosis a disease. So they stop importing these two animals, uh, dogs and a bird, I mean parrots, and thereby they can control. Uh, also, they also control the infection by improvement of public health, improving bubbly health, pH, bubbly health. How, do, how to improve the bubbly health? You have to improve by control water supply, good water supply, hygiene, right? And then sewage systems, sewage systems, and education in personal hygiene, personal hygiene personal hygiene and also they in thereby they can control the cholera prevention. So they, they did water supply, the cholera, sewage system in the cholera infection and then uh, personal hygiene. So all they control and, and then they want to prevent the cholera prevention. So by improving the bubbly health. So if anyone wants to go to the bubbly health as a post uh, of your graduate courses and everything. So these are some of the points will be valid and, and then important for you guys, okay? So we have to know how to administer these molecules or how to prevent a type of disease. We know about the antibody. Antibody binds with antigen and thereby it will induce certain reactions and thereby you can prevent. So how to acquire as a passively acquired acquired immunity. How to get a passively acquired immunity? This passively acquired immunity, it will provide a temporary protection. Temporary protection against any infection, okay? And using, using preformed, you are not using your own antibody, but using a preformed antibody, okay, from another individual, from another individual of the same species, same species, or different species. So, you don't have antibody, you are sick. So, what you can do, you prone to get some infection, but you have a prophylactic, you have to induce your prevention method. So, what you need to do, you take your antibody from another person who is, who is immunized or who has more antibody. You get his antibody and put it in your blood, are you happy? Yes, it is, it is possible, but it is a temporary production because you are not producing your own immunity. You are depending upon somebody else, okay? So that's why it is a, it's a temporary protection. That is called passive acquired immunity. Passive acquired immunity, you are getting an antibody from another person or another species. For example, you can get some antibody from horse, snake bite and, and, and some other, you know, tetanus and other things, they can, they can get into your system and then thereby you can immunize. So that is the passively acquired immunity. But what happened the acquired, acquired antibody use or utilize the antigen and provide the protection. And, and, and as soon as the number, suppose you have 500 antibodies and then you have a, a 200 antigen. So first encounter 500 from here, 200 will use, another time it will use another 200 molecule and then what will happen, another another 100, and then what will happen is, you know, it will, so first time infection, 200 is you okay, you are perfectly all right, you will be prevented, and second time infection, another 200, yes, that is also been prevented, and then third time, if you have a 200 antigen molecule, but only 100 will go and bind, rest of the 100 of the antigen molecule will be there, and that induces the disease. So it is called as a temporary disease. Temporarily, you can have a prevention. Because you are not capable of, of getting the antibody. Unless otherwise you have to be, every time you infect, how do you know when you are getting infected? You have to always 
always feeding the antibody continuously in your system. You do not want to load unnecessarily, it is expensive and you cannot get bleed another person. So, you can prophylactically, you can say one time and then prevent, but it will withstand for a while and after that it will come up again. So, it is a temporary protection. So, the example again, I, I put it that example is a horse, it is a horse globulin, globulins, horse globulins. They have used anti tetanus, anti tetanus and anti diphtheria, diphtheria. You know what is diphtheria toxins? Have you ever uh, picked up egg grapes from the supermarket or something without wash? You put it in your mouth and then after a while you get a, a sore throat. Have you ever experienced that? You always eat everything washed, right? That is a good, good student, okay. Sometimes even if you something spill over, you do not know anything about it, sometimes you are getting sick, you are okay, but you in without your knowledge, somebody put something else on the outside and then you keep it uh, up, but you may wash your hand without washing those fruits or anything, the diphtherial toxins already flooded in, in the grapes washed. They used to spray all the pesticide. If you go on to the supermarket, sometimes you say one pound is two ninety nine, and the next day it is going to be ninety nine cent. And then you go and smell it, you got all pesticide smells, and then you don't buy that one. Yeah, they reduce the price and sale and everything. Be careful and watchful because they spray all this fungicide and everything for the diphtheria toxin over there. So if you wash this, and then you can eat, even that's okay. But sometimes if you don't wash it, you get your sore throat on that. That is the diphtheria toxin. Is a more that's a very good ground for the two because more glucose molecules are there. So the anti diphtheria toxin which is already raised in the heart, so you can get the heart's antibody and then you can inject by IM intramuscular. If you do IV, what will happen? The protein, heart's protein and your protein will clump together and that induces hypersensitivity. You are getting allergic and your muscles is being more of histamine release and thereby you have allergic reaction. So you should get these. I am, that is an intramuscular injection of these molecules or this anti diphtheria toxin from the antibody. Okay. You can prophylactically we can do it, but it is good, but it is being practiced widely. For the complication is what complication which I just mentioned to you? Complication is serum sickness. Serum sickness because due to the foreign protein and that can also induce a certain complications. Okay. Now, we will go on to the next part is the person to person. One good example is a maternally acquired one. Maternally acquired antibody. How many of you mothers here? Mother. Okay. Mother there? Any mother? There, Victoria? Cinco Ranch? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Okay, maternally transferred antibody. I'm just I'm going to give you an example as a fetus, okay, protected by mother's immunoglobulin molecule. So, you have gone vaccinated. Is that right? Those mothers? Yes? Good. Because that antibody is going over there, already the IgG molecule which is present in the mothers and that can be transferred to the fetus through the placenta and thereby it can protect uh, before the lymphatic, lymphatic system development. So, how a yeah, fetus is can survive any adverse infection? The mother antibody transferred to the fetus and that is a prophylactic. The antibody is there and as soon as if any infection start that, that can prevent. So, the prophylaxis or the it has been antibodies being produced from mothers being transferred. Now, the another one, another type is a neonate, a newborn. Neonate or the newborn? In for them, the IgA is the protection, and this IgA normally secretes 
in mother's milk, you know. And through where the milk contains what is called cholesterol immunoglobulin. Cholesterol. Have you ever heard of that one? Breast milk contains the cholesterol. That is enriched amount of IgA, immunoglobulin A molecule. And this immunoglobulin molecule, it is not absorbed when the baby get this milk and it is not absorbed in the intestine. It is not absorbed in the intestine. Suppose it is intestine or the baby's intestine, newborn. So this will capture here. It will stay there. The IgA, IgA stays there. If you remember correct, before we call it the mouth, is the, the, the mucosal surface uh, uh, protection for this uh, immunity. So this one is from the mother, this IgA molecule from the milk. It, it is not absorbed to the blood, but it stays there and it prevents the, what is called the infection. So the babies get, take any other infections are getting through the orally, through the mouth. So that can be protected by mothers. If there is no milk that contains the IgA or they are not feeding with the mother's milk, what will happen? That baby. Is that right? It is not being protected by the IgA. It can get into this all set of infections. So it's very important to get this one cholesterol. Okay. This protection mucosal surface infection. Okay. Protect mucosal surface infection. That's for IgA. Okay. Now imagine how this mother's milk contains the IgA. We normally have this molecule from the B cells, the immunoglobulin molecule. So that's a small mechanism. How that is happen? Surface IgA molecule, okay, and this director, this one is directed against, okay, mother's gut. See, mother already they have uh, intestine, small intestine and every, uh, and there has some infection and the mother's gut or the small intestine, they have the bacteria, correct? Bacteria and uh, other uh, organisms which is present already in the mother's gut and this will direct the B cells of mother's B cells on onto the antigen, these antigens and that will activate in the mother's B cells or the surface immunoglobulin for this. And these cells will produce more of IgA, okay? And then these B cells will migrate. That's very interesting. Migrate to breast. And these cells, the B cells will colonize, colonize near milk secreting cells. So what will happen then when the milk is secreted, then IgA is also secreted and then it is going to the baby when they eat sucks. Okay? Yes? Yes. It is not absorbed. That's what I'm saying. See, it, it gets from the mother's milk, okay? And this molecule it stays in the surface of the intestine. Oh. Okay. Now, and it is there. It's okay, quite happy. But when the baby is getting some infection, is getting chewing with something else, some other food, or or it's it's getting from water or any other sources, it gets some infections getting into the mouth and getting the intestine. At that time, the IgA which is already there, and that will prevent that infection. It will bind with that infection and that because it cannot, baby new, newborn, they don't get the lymphatics or B cell is not matured enough. It won't produce any antibody. It is totally, totally depending upon mother's milk. 
So the mother's milk is good at that time. Knowing that now they are giving more of the IgA addition from the cow's milk and then provide for those baby who is not able to get the mother's milk. Okay. Another interesting story which I have just read on that, uh, on this context, like, um, uh, you know, when the evening milk, the new scientists they have just, uh, you know, released in the last couple of weeks ago, I got the, uh, you know, the, um, I, I can give it to you in the com coming to the lab of, of those uh, um, literature, uh, that paper, article. The 5-G-U-M-P, sorry, 5-G-M-P, and then A-M-P, or uh, U-E-M-P, so these are some uh, nucleotide. You know about the ATP, AMP, ADP like. So these molecule of the nucleotides, of mononucleotide, they are enriched in the evening milk of the mother. Evening milk. And this will lead to sleepy. So whenever the baby gets the milk in the evening, they get more sleep when compared to the baby is taking the milk at the daytime. So they got a researcher and they found out evening milk contains this particular molecule more in high quantity when compared to the daytime. I don't, that's why I asked you how many mothers you have in the nighttime getting more sleep for the baby and then they take the milk before go to bed, before go to sleep. Or the baby is so wild or getting more hungry and then getting the milk and getting go to sleep. That is also a process. Now they are adding in future, I think they, the company they are, they are adding more of the GMP, GUP for the milk formula, formula milk, and they say this is night formula milk. Don't give the daytime. It's a night, but they they don't care. They don't want to get the disturb the baby, so they will provide all of them all the time so the baby sleep. That is oh, so don't no disturbance for the mother or father. So it is it, it is a quite uh, amazing thing. Also, I don't know whether in the adult. If you take milk or the cow's milk, when before go to bed, you get sleepy. Have you, how many of you heard that one? From my childhood onwards, my father and uh, mother and everybody is there, you know, before go to bed, you had a cup of milk, always. But when I, when I don't take it, then I may not be able to get sleep, not a good sleep or something like that. They always is a, is a must one. I don't know, but some of them, they won't get the milk for a while, but, but this one, if you add some, GMP, MP, and, and all this, and you have a formula milk for adult, and you can make a million dollars. So that's one of the business <laughs> friends. You can do that. For those who are sleep, sleep apnea and then sleep disturbance and everything, don't worry about it. Take a two cup of milk. Go to sleep. No problem. Okay. Now, the, the same way, okay, the same way we can also do as a, another way, pooled human globally. Pooled human globulin, and here the patients with uh, now we are talking about the how the human uh, antibody helps the another human. Okay, patients with the long standing, long standing immunodeficiency, immunodeficiency, some patients, some disease deficiency. Okay. And the treatment for this is to provide adult, human adult uh, gamma globulin. And they are valuable in treating chicken pox, the variety of chicken pox, measles, measles and hepatitis infection. So, the, these infections, chicken box, measles, hepatitis, and these infections, if you provide, uh, you know, maybe 10 people's uh, blood together, and then getting into the gamma globulin, if you give, administer, and thereby you can provide. These are some of the immune deficiency patients. It's not like a Dracula. See, Dracula, have you heard of that? Sucking the blood and everything, right? So, that is a good, in a, in a sense, in a, in a different way. It's not a Dracula. But, you know, in the hospital or pharmacy, they can get more of the blood or the gamma globulin, they can do it. One other thing is the blood contains more of the growth factors for the young or something. This is nothing to do with the immunology, but for the keeping young. Have you ever heard of the 
uh, Austrian princes or someone who who is getting old and somebody told they got a young girl's blood will make her young. So she started slaughtering all young girls in that country and the neighboring countries. And then she used to get a bloody bath every day. So every day she needs you know, five liters of uh, adult blood. So you need to have more than you know, 10 or 15 girls and then kill them, kill them, kill them. It, it, it is a story. It, is, uh, it happened. It is not a story. It, is, it was happening. So if you go and Google it, Astrian and blood bath or anything, it is there. So they make it, but that is not going to help anyway. The aging is different. So that's one other thing. But here, in this context, it is true. You can provide the gamma globulin and keep your immune system up if it is an immunodeficiency. Okay? Now, the human anti-tetanus immunoglobulin is better therapy than harsh one. Human Ig, immunoglobulin, is better than horse because the same species and this is good for the anti-tetanus. Okay? Because the anti-serum is not, the serum sickness won't come because the another species won't cross-react. The human to human, it helps. Okay. And the another disease in this case is thrombocytopenia. Throm, thrombocytopenic purpura. This is a, a disease where the thrombocytosis or thrombin level is going down. So it's a thrombocytopenic. And for them, you have to provide more of the blood. Uh, the gamma globulins over there. Uh, it is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. Okay. But the root of administration, as I mentioned before, this is the IM. You should not treat with the IV because if you treat IV, that will clot with the other cells. But the IM, it's a sustained and then it will provide health. Also, you can, uh, they also provide with the monoclonal antibodies. Now it is coming up. No, no more killing, um, you know, or, or, or getting the human blood. So now the culture thing, so you can do the monoclonal antibodies where you can do more of um, the antibody for the human body vaccine, yeah, or the herpes virus, so herpes, zoster, tetanus, and rubella. And for the recent one is the swine flu virus. Okay. Swine flu. So, vaccine virus, herpes virus, tetanus virus, organisms, and then rubella, and then swine flu. So, for all of them, you can get more of monoclonal antibodies, and thereby you can protect yourself. Okay. That's a possible. Now, the next question is to how we can get this one cultured, cell culture, cultured antibody made to order. So in those days, if the, like a, any endemic, like a swine flu is coming up or any other chicken paw, like a, like a bird's flu, like different type of uh, infections you know, is coming up from, uh, they also call it as a bioterrorism and everything. So we will study on those uh, on the next semester, which I'm going to teach a five class on bioterrorism and then how these are of the viral as a, as a weapon, biological weapon to us, how to prevent. How many of you have you taken those classes before? How many of you, yeah, you have taken them? How many of you interested in taking this one for the next semester? You are interested? Okay. So you are interested? Huh? Okay, good. Because that's on a, uh, criminal justice and biology and nursing. So it is a very good package and it is much useful when compared to the traditional one, one subject alone, study that. And so you will get more benefit from that too. So we will study more about how we are dealing with those conditions and different type of biological weapons. And, and, and there we used to do the recombinant DNA technology recombinant DNA technologies, how we can use those technology for, for getting 
uh, more of a cultured antibody. So, what I am going to do, this is going to be our next uh, class on 23, right, 23 November. So, we will finish our exam and then we will continue this, okay. So, your exam is going to be what chapter? So, review. What chapter we have finished for your exam? 7? Seven? 7, 8. Seven, eight. We, we have done um, for this class, right? The exam 7 and 8 and uh, yeah, that's only 2, right? 6 and 7, yeah. In your new text is 7 and 8 and old one is the 8 and 9. And um, yeah, I finished this one, 2. And you are going to have uh, multiple choice questions okay, as per from your side and that is it and then after that we have a regular class, okay. No zoom or no uh, a short notes or anything, yeah, as soon as you finish your class and then we will go on to the lecture series on that, is that right? You follow Albert, uh, Ellen or Kelly? Yes, sir, I understand. You have uh, questions from chapter 7 and 8 for your exam, a uh, multiple choice question from the book, from the publishers, okay. Any other? No short answers, no essay type question. As, as soon as you finish your exam, we are going for the lecture, okay. The exam is going to be probably one hour or so. You can finish it up all within an hour, but you know, one hour is an exam time. Any other questions? Kelly, are you there? Yes. Yes, okay. Any questions from Sugarland? Yes, 